Angie is your home for everything home, and they've made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. If you own a home, you know how much work it can take, whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality. It can be hard just to know where to start. But now, all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise that you need. Angie has over 20 years of home service experience and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly. Which means you can take care of just about any home project in just a few steps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your own home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. This episode is brought to you by the new true crime docuseries, American Nightmare, only on Netflix. In 2015, the Vallejo, California Police Department received a strange phone call about a kidnapping. But when the truth is stranger than fiction, you won't know who to trust or what is real. A fast-paced true crime thriller with cliffhangers at every turn. Watch American Nightmare now, only on Netflix. The Curse of the Pharaohs. I'm Jason Horton. I'm Rebecca Lieb. And this is Ghost Town. In early 1923, British archaeologist Howard Carter and his financier friend George Herbert, fifth lord of Carnarvon, ceremoniously opened the long-hidden burial chamber of the boy pharaoh Tutankhamun. While it would become the most famous and high-profile discovery in the history of Egyptology, months later the Earl of Carnarvon would be dead, the first of a succession of mysterious deaths that would capture the imagination of modern Europe, who speculated that the opening of the tomb, among others, was part of a bigger mummy's curse, a warning to those who dare mess with the hidden burial sites all over the legendary Valley of the Kings. Today we're talking about the curse of King Tut's tomb, or more generally known as the curse of the pharaohs. But let's go back a bit and talk about King Tut himself. Tutankhamun, whose name means living image of Aten, was born in the shadow of Akhenaten, his father. Akhenaten did two controversial and notable things for Egypt, made the society monotheistic versus what they were before, polytheistic, by having Egyptians only worship Aten, the sun god, and moving Egypt's capital from Thames to Amarna to reinforce that choice. But when Akhenaten died, his nine-year-old son took his place. With the help of his advisors, King Tut reversed many of his dad's decisions, reinstating polytheism, etc. This boy king was well-liked for that reason, but Tut would die unexpectedly ten years after he was made pharaoh. To this day, people puzzle over why Tutankhamun died. Some think he was murdered, others think it was accidental. Preeminent theories suggest that Tutankhamun's health was never very good, that Tut had bone necrosis and a possible club foot, which may have rendered him dependent on a cane or gave him scoliosis, or that he had contracted several strains of malaria. Now, the general belief is that Tutankhamun likely died of complications from a broken leg, possibly compounded by malaria. In 1323 BC, King Tut was buried in a tomb as custom. His body, his servants' bodies, and over 5,000 precious goods left to use in the afterlife. Now fast forward to 1923, when Egyptologist Howard Carter opened a small hole at the bottom of a stairway mistakenly found by Carter's water boy. In fact, it was two doorways, one with an Egyptian cartouche or seal and one inside of that. So on November 26th, Carter with George Herbert, fifth lord of Carnarvon, Carter's boss and financial backer, Lady Evelyn, the Earl's daughter, and assistant Arthur Callender, Carter hammered away at the door with the chisel that his grandmother had given him for his 17th birthday. At that point, he had no idea what he was looking at, but it seemed promising. As his eyes adjusted, Carter realized that this was big, very big. Here's a quote from Carter himself. As my eyes grew accustomed to the light, details of the room within emerged slowly from the mist, strange animals, statues, and gold, everywhere the glint of gold, for the moment, an eternity, it must have seemed to others standing by, I was struck dumb with amazement, 
and when Lord Carnivan, unable to stand the suspense any longer, inquired anxiously, Can you see anything? It was all I could do to get out the words, Yes. Wonderful things. Carter had in fact discovered the tomb site KV-62, also known as Tutankhamun's tomb. The tomb was then secured to be entered in the presence of an official of the Egyptian Department of Antiquities the next day, as was protocol. However, that night, Carter, Carnivan, Lady Evelyn, and Callender allegedly made an unauthorized visit, becoming the first people in modern times to enter the perfectly preserved tomb, and eventually the burial chamber through a small hole in the chamber's sealed doorway. After a gigantic media frenzy, work excavating the tomb began in 1923, and eventually approved visitors could come and see the perfectly preserved tomb for themselves. But towards the end of February, a rift between Lord Carnarvon and Carter, probably caused by a disagreement on how to manage the Egyptian authorities, temporarily halted what would become a 10-year excavation. Really, the pinnacle of everybody's work. When Howard Carter discovered the tomb of Tutankhamun, he remarked that it was, quote, the day of days, the most wonderful that I've ever lived through, and certainly one whose like I can never hope to see again. Work started again in early March after Lord Carnarvon apologized to Carter, but soon the Earl of Carnarvon mysteriously fell ill from a mosquito bite while staying near the Luxor tomb site. He died on April 5th, 1923, four months and seven days after opening the tomb. People loved a puzzling death linked to an ancient tomb, of course, and artists and influencers of the day weighed in. The Times in London and New York World magazine published the best-selling novelist Marie Corelli's speculations that, quote, the most dire punishment follows any rash intruder in a sealed tomb. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, creator of Sherlock Holmes and a known spiritualist, suggested that Lord Carnarvon's death had been caused by, quote, elementals created by Tutankhamun's priests to guard the royal tomb, which, of course, the media loved. Journalist and Egyptologist Arthur Weigel also reported that six weeks before Carnarvon's death, he had watched the Earl laughing and joking as he entered the king's tomb. Witnessing the Earl's cavalier attitude towards the tomb, Weigel said to a nearby reporter, quote, I give him six weeks to live. At the time, people also thought that maybe Carnarvon's death somehow corresponded to the way 19-year-old Tutankhamun's death played out. The first autopsy carried out on the body of Tutankhamun found a healed lesion on his left cheek. But because Carnarvon had been buried six months before the autopsy, it was impossible to determine if the location of the wound on the king corresponded with a mosquito bite on Carnarvon. But then it wasn't just Lord Carnarvon. There were more. A guest at the site named George J. Gould developed a fever after his visit and died in the French Riviera on May 16, 1923. Then a man named A.C. Mace, a member of Carter's excavation team, died in April 1928 of either pneumonia or poisoning. Carter's own secretary, Captain Richard Bethel, died on November 15, 1929, the victim of a suspected smothering. Other alleged victims of what was forming into a full-fledged curse included Prince Ali Kamal Fahimi Bey of Egypt, I'm sure I said that wrong, who was shot dead by his wife in 1923, Sir Archibald Douglas Reed, who supposedly x-rayed the mummy and died mysteriously in 1924, Sir Lee Stack, the Governor General of Sudan, who was assassinated in Cairo in 1924, and Captain Richard Bethel's father, who died of suicide in 1930. Of course, these deaths got people thinking, but this wouldn't be the first tomb with this reputation. Likely, the concept of a, quote, mummy's curse came from the tomb of the Ninth Dynasty pharaoh Anktifi, whose tomb contains the warning, quote, Any ruler who shall do evil or wickedness to this coffin, may Hemen, a local deity, not accept any goods he offers, and may his heir not inherit. Or the idea of a mummy's curse comes from the tomb of the 6th dynasty pharaoh Kent Tika Ik Heki, which contains an inscription, quote, As for all men who shall enter my tomb, impure, there will be judgment, an end shall be made for him. I shall seize his neck like a bird. I shall cast the fear of myself into him. These are alarming and legitimate threats. Salima Ikram, an Egyptologist at the American University in Cairo, thinks that these walls inscribed with, quote, curses were in fact meant to terrify those who would desecrate or rob a royal resting place. Quote, they tend to threaten desecrators with divine retribution by the counsel of their gods, Ikram said, or a death by crocodiles or lions or scorpions or snakes. But modern history took this idea and boy, did they run with it. We'll talk about that and what actually happened to these victims and why after the break. Angie is your home for everything home, and they've made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. If you own a home, you know how much work it can take. 
Whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality, it can be hard just to know where to start. But now, all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise that you need. Angie has over 20 years of home service experience and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly. Which means you can take care of just about any home project in just a few steps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your own home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. We all have that friend who wakes up early to go get everyone McDonald's breakfast while the rest of us sleep in. This is your sign to thank them. And if you're that friend, this is us saying thank you. Just a friendly reminder that right now, get any size iced coffee before 11 a.m. for just 99 cents. And a satisfying sausage McMuffin with egg is just two seventy nine. dollars Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Hi, hello, how are you? Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing? How's it going out there? Oh, a little TMI? A little TMI. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Okay, okay. That's the vibes I'm getting. Wow. I like yeah, it. Just, you want more. Yeah. Okay, Not okay. Not too much more. Not too much more. We want to say hello to anyone who's listening, hello. supporting us, spreading the good word of Ghost Town. Thank we you. Thank you. Thank you. We thank you thank from you. Mountain High. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> All the way up there. <laughs> okay. Uh, by mountain, I mean this office building in downtown. Yeah, seventh floor. Yes. Uh, from seventh floor high. Yes. Great. We shouted to you, mm -hmm. and you shouted out. Yeah. There's a lot of shouting, and we would love to. It would be our pleasure to thank our ghost town government. Mm, our pleasure. Yeah. Okay. I'm a people pleaser. You are. Including governments. That's right. That's and right. all governing bodies. Wow, a real snitch. We got a couple of people that dole out curses. Mm-mm. The mayors. Oh. Okay. When they don't get what they want. Okay. <laughs> I curse you. I, I curse thought you were going to do a bad review. <laughs> nope. Nope. Although if you would like to give us an Apple podcast review. We'd love it. We'd love it. We'd read it. We'd read it. We'd love it and we'd read it. Or Wouldn't wherever you like you're that? listening, if they have a, a place to review or give it five stars, do it. I beg you. I beg you. We beseech you. Yes. I thousands of years. This mayor hopes that your Wi-Fi always sucks. Ooh, that's a nasty that's curse. A curse. That's I hate a that curse. Nasty curse. In fact, I'm getting like a little bit tense about it. Well, you can don't cross Emma Hopkins. Uh uh. This mayor lays on a pretty nasty curse. Hmm. Every time you go to order something at a restaurant, you order something that sucks. Oh. You kind of oh. do that anyway. Normally, yeah, um, I do that too. I've already, already cursed got this. That. You've already got Did this. This person curse. already cursed me. Well, that's Matthew Clemens LeRae. Hello. This mayor lays on a pretty nasty curse. Every time you play the lottery, you're always off by one number, and it's the last number. So you no. think you're hitting that jackpot, that Powerball? This is a bad one. Nope. It's a nasty one. It'll, it'll really mess you up. Yeah. <laughs> it'll ruin your... Psychological warfare. Well, that's Casey Weber's style. Hello. This mayor pretty much just stole this from the movie Shallow Hal. <laughs> Which I've never seen, but I know the premise. Yeah. Where you look at someone. It's a bad, it's a pretty bad take. Bad take, bad, bad take, take. Doesn't age well. Doesn't age well, but somebody is taking the power back mm -hmm. and using it against her foes. Mm. Where you look at somebody and you're like, that person's really hot. Why are they talking to me? Mm. And it's somebody who looks like me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. And you're like, I, I didn't know a that. Blessing and a curse. That's Kelly Meehan. Hello. This mayor lays down a nasty one. Mm. Um, how about no matter how much conditioner you use, you always have split ends. <gasps> Take it back. No. Too late. Oh, no. You've already crossed Cat oh. Joselle. Oh, no, 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 no. This mayor is ice cold. Petty as hell. Mm -mm. When you have a party, you send out a bunch of invites. Oh, they all say yes. And all the good people say yes. Mm -hmm. All the good ones that you want to be there mm -hmm, say yes. Mm -hmm. And then, then when it comes time for party time? No, no, no. None of them show up 
you ordered all of this food. Oh, no. And then the three people you didn't want there show up a minute early. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. And they stay all night. <sighs> They eat that food. They talk and they talk and they talk. What are you going to do with those foot-long sandwiches? <laughs> That's a party, freeze right? Them. <laughs> <laughs> nope. They're too long. I'm getting hungry. Okay. Well, okay. you can blame Ashley Matson. Hello. And then our governor casting her spell from a jumbo jet in the freaking sky. Wow. Just – it's just like – it's just sprinkling – it on you over your heads mm. if you cross her. Mm-mm. And trust me. Don't do it. I've already crossed her. That's why do you think I'm in the, mess, the shape I'm in? Oh, I've no. Already, she will curse you with starting another podcast. <gasps> yes. No, no, Bringing no, another no, podcast no, no, no. in that no one needs, no one wants, no, no one wants to it hear. Back. Another one? Make it right. Another one where you're two friends that are kind of like, oh, we're so funny. We're so interesting. The whole world's going to think we're funny and interesting. Yeah. You haven't heard about Scorsese films. We're going to tell you about them. (laughs) Yeah, but it's going to be a little different. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. That would be our governor, Avian Avian Noble. Noble. If you want no ads, no chit-chat, bonus episodes, just the good stuff, seven days free. Head on over to patreon.com slash ghost town pod. And check us out on TikTok and Instagram. We're making mm-hmm. videos. We're cranking them out. We're trying to find our best poses. Mm-hmm. We spend more time trying to angle our bodies. Yeah, just scrutinizing ourselves. It would help if you liked it, commented, shared it. Yeah. Instagram or TikTok, it really helps. That'd be great. You could just hit that like uh, heart or whatever or share and then never look at it. Who cares? Mm-hmm. It's Ghost Town Pod on Instagram and or TikTok. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Please help us. Help us help ourselves and not help you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so do you want to go let's back a back. couple thousand? Yes, let's do it. We're not going back that far. We're going back to modern history um, where we learned that, you know, there was ancient evidence of a, quote, tomb's curse before modern day. But I'd imagine that the politics around it was essentially looting and utilizing tombs and Egyptian artifacts for Western gain likely came into play during all of this and the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb. The contemporary discourse around a mummy's curse bubbled up in 1699, where there was an account of a Polish traveler who went on a ship passage with two Alexandrian mummies. This is the first modern indication of a curse tied to mummies, of horrible luck brought on by invading Egyptian burial spaces. The traveler was, quote, alarmed by reoccurring visions of two specters, and the stormy seas did not abate until the mummies were thrown overboard. But then there's the recollection of Egyptian-born archaeologist Zahi Hawass, who, while excavating a tomb in the 1960s, had to transport several artifacts away from the site. He states that his cousin died on that day, and that his uncle died exactly a year later, and that exactly three years later, his aunt died. Years later, when he was excavating the tombs of the builders of the pyramids at Giza, he encountered an actual written curse, like the ones we mentioned earlier, at that site. They said, quote, All people who enter this tomb who will make evil against this tomb and destroy it, may the crocodile be against them in water, and snakes against them on land. May the hippopotamus be against them in water, the scorpion on land. Alarmed, Hawass did not disturb the mummies. However, later Hawass claimed that he removed two child mummies from another tomb and brought them to a museum, and said that he was haunted by the children in his dreams. According to the archaeologist, these hauntings would continue until Hawass reunited the mummy of the father with the children's mummies in the museum. Of course, our culture has been increasingly preoccupied with Egyptian iconography, mummies, and curses. But late Egyptologist Dominic Montserrat thinks the concept didn't originate from Egyptologists themselves, but 19th century creatives, spinning their own tales about mummies and curses. Quote, My work shows quite clearly that the mummy's curse concept predates Carnivan's Tutankhamun discovery and his death by a hundred years, Montserrat told The Independent in an interview some years before his death. Quote, My research has not only confirmed that there is, of course, no ancient Egyptian origin of the mummy's curse concept, but more importantly, it also reveals that it didn't originate in the 1923 press publicity about the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb either. So then, what happened to these people? We understand maybe the curse comes from artists or journalists, but what about all the random deaths after interacting with King Tut's tomb? 
In the 80s and 90s, some professionals believe that the pharaoh's curse was biological in nature. Sealed tombs, some thought, may have housed pathogens that could pose a threat to those with weakened immune systems. Lab studies have shown that some ancient mummies carried mold, including Aspergillus niger and Aspergillus flavus, which can cause congestion or bleeding in the lungs. Lung-assaulting bacteria such as Pseudomonas and Staphylococcus may also grow on tomb walls. Though these molds and bacteria seem pretty scary, or are scary-sounding when I mispronounce them, even more recently people think that that might be a flawed theory. F. DeWolf Miller, professor of epidemiology at the University of Hawaii at Manoa, certainly thinks so, believing that, given the time period, Lord Carnarvon was probably safer inside Tut's tomb than outside of it. Quote, Upper Egypt in the 1920s was hardly what you'd call sanitary, he said. The idea that an underground tomb after 3,000 years would have some kind of bizarre microorganism in it that's going to kill everybody six weeks later and make it look exactly like blood poisoning is very hard to believe. In fact, Miller continues, he knows of no archaeologist, or a single tourist for that matter, who has experienced any afflictions caused by tomb toxins. But back in the 1920s and 30s, Egypt enthusiasts were none the wiser. Howard Carter himself, the man who explored the tomb on February 16, 1923, would die over 16 years after he opened King Tut's tomb on March 2, 1939, at his flat in London. Up until that point, Carter's love of Egypt remained strong. The epitaph on his gravestone reads, quote, May your spirit live, may you spend millions of years, you who love Thebes, sitting with your face to the north wind, your eyes beholding happiness. A quotation taken from the wishing cup of Tutankhamun, the first object Carter would find upon entering the tomb back in 1923. After the tomb's discovery in the Valley of the Kings, much of the contents were transferred to the British Museum and stayed there through the 30s and 40s. Since then, the collection has traveled the world and has found permanent housing in a new type of tomb at the Egyptian Museum in Cairo for the Egyptian people and thousands of visitors to see, unthreatened or at least skeptical, of a pervasive ancient curse. Angie is your home for everything home. And they've made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. If you own a home, you know how much work it can take. Whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality, it can be hard just to know where to start. But now, all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise that you need. Angie has over 20 years of home service experience and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly. Which means you can take care of just about any home project in just a few steps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your own home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. I wanted to tell you about our podcast, Drew Blood's Dark Tales, hosted by me, Drew Blood. We're a weekly storytelling podcast where you'll hear hand-picked horror from our favorite authors, accompanied by a full audio production and performed by yours truly. I invite you to search for Drew Blood's Dark Tales on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever else you do your listening. And subscribe for longer episodes each and every week. It's time to turn off the lights and turn on the dark. <laughs> This is Chilling Tales for Dark Nights. Good evening, listener. I'm Steve Taylor, your host to a horror anthology podcast 
where we ask you to depart from your safe perception of reality to descend with us into the frightening depths and dark corners of twisted imaginations. With carefully curated original tales of terror each week, our deepest rooted fears are brought to the forefront by a diverse cast of voice talent and masterfully eerie sound design that bring these stories to life. We'll give you tales of unnerving encounters with the occult, harrowing hauntings, and sinister seances that show just how darkness knows no bounds. If you're like us here at Chilling Tales and enjoy feeling your stomach filling with dread as dastardly demons dance in your head, make sure to check out Chilling Tales for Dark Nights on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts to subscribe now to always be the first to enjoy the horror show.